Good morning, everybody. Iowa time here, 5.18 a.m. Thank you for coming to my channel. Click the like button and subscribe, please. I appreciate it so much, and I want to thank all my subscribers that have subscribed. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so. And um, bless your hearts. Well, let's go to this one right here. This will be the last video for me for today. And this one here to me is very disturbing. Let me get it lined up here. Democrats block GOP effort to thwart deadly fentanyl trafficking. House Democrats stood firmly in the way on Wednesday of a Republican bill that would have placed deadly fentanyl related substances, including precursors, as scheduled one materials under the Controlled Substances Act. Overall, 220 Liberal House members voted against the measure, which would have given the federal government much-needed new avenues to thwart this deadly epidemic. I'm just lost for words here. Yeah, it's just, it's an epidemic, and I don't know what's wrong with those people with those Democrats. Amazingly, fentanyl is now the leading killer of U.S. adults 18 to 45. But this sooner or later is going to involve a lot younger. That's the worst part of it all. Experts report that 10% of the unusual drop in American life expectancy experienced in recent years is due to OPED deaths. Opoid Scourge has roots in communist China, which is a principal source of the raw materials and precursors. These products are sent to Mexico for preparation and smuggled across Biden's open border and into the U.S. The HALT All Lethal Trafficking of Fennel Act was sponsored by Representative Morgan Griffith, and he's a Republican of Virginia, and introduced with Rep. Bob Latta, Republican of Ohio, or is that L-A-T-T-A, Lata? I'm so sorry if I mispronounced some of these names, but fully 88 co-sponsors signed on, all Republicans. Griffith hailed the measure as giving the federal government new and important tools in fighting fentanyl, fentanyl traffickers. He also said that the legislation would help lessen the total of overdose deaths in the U.S. Apparently, that was not good enough for convincing to convince Democrats in the House to sign on. This now marks the third time this year the party has blocked the bill. They stopped it in February and again in April. Some GOP members of the Energy and Commerce Commerce Committee suggested that Democrats want to weaken criminal penalties on traffickers who move fentanyl-related substances. substances. Several other Republican-sponsored measures are in the works to combat the opioid epidemic. Representative Paul Gozar, G-O-S-A-R, Republican from Arizona, introduced a bill requiring life imprisonment or the death penalty for dealing fentanyl when it results in a loss of life. The late Indiana Republican Representative Jackie Warlarski sponsored a measure to allow for lawsuits by individuals or state attorneys general against foreign governments that allow the trafficking of fentanyl, fentanyl to the U.S. This is just unthinkable. Ouch. Just unthinkable. Oh my goodness, it is 
Conjunctible, unconscionable. <laughs> it's unthinkable. Let me just say that. It's inconscionable. It's inconscionable that Democrats continue to stand in the way of real progress in tackling this crisis. Punishments for traffickers need to be swift and certain, and there's no room for standing around and just waiting for the crisis to blow over. Oh, it's never going to blow over. Never. I mean, good gravy. What is wrong with the Democrats? They will do anything to destroy us, our, our young people, our middle-aged people, senior people. What is wrong with those people? The Democrats. How could they even think about blocking something that would help stop the drug trafficking and the traffickers bringing it to our country through the border. Well, do I need to repeat myself? They're trying to kill us off. Mm. Next. Dr. Fusi, is it Fusi or Fossi, F-A-U-C-I? Dr. Fusi is five millions richer thanks to COVID outbreak. Well, isn't that something? Making money off the people that passed away from COVID? Making money off of people with the shots and everybody else got rich? Dr. Anthony Fossi and his wife Net worth skyrocketed for five million during the COVID-19 surge. As Americans struggled to pay their bills, keep their businesses going, Fuji profited from the pandemic, which he potentially falsely claimed was started at a Chinese wet market. Fuji is set to retire from his role as director of the National Institute of allergy and infectious diseases. The 81 year old, excuse me again, step down comes after Republican Senators Rad Paul pressured the Department of Justice to intact a criminal referral against Fauci. Fucci, whatever. Paul and many other Republicans believed Fucci lied to Congress about grain of function research in China. According to reports from the non-profit Open the Books, Fucci and his wife, Christina Grady, wealth rose from $7.5 million in 2019 to $12.6 million by 21, and that's 2021. Despite becoming a figure of controversy, controversy the system has rewarded Dr. Fucci handsomely. Open the Books. CEO Adam Andrzejewski told Fox News Digital, while Dr. Fushi has been a government bureaucrat for more than 55 years, his household net worth skyrocketed during the pandemic. The five million came from higher salary rises, cash awards, royalties in part. Fushi's soaring net worth was based on career and salary spiking lucrative cash prizes awarded by nonprofit organizations around the world and an ever larger investment portfolio, Andrew Zizuki said. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. Andrew Zizuki. He is the top paid federal employee. His first year Golden Parachute Retirement Pension is the largest in federal history. And he's accepting one million prizes from foreign nonprofits, he added. Former President Trump allowed Fushi to be front and center while the COVID-19 virus surged in 2020 and continually politicized the pandemic. He pushed the strict lockdowns and a huge and was a huge proponent of the controversial COVID shot, controversial COVID shot. Despite not following Fushi's plans, 
uh, places like Florida and Texas showed that the doctor's orders were not only unnecessary, but completely baseless. Fuji has claimed that the Wuhan lab had nothing to do with creating and releasing the virus. Oh my God. He also was adamant that the virus was not man-made. However, it is now clear that there is a high possibility that the virus was created in a lab may have been used as a bioweapon. Follow the money and find the truth and a mantra that hasn't failed yet. And Fushi's money stream sure does give insight. Unthinkable. Absolutely unthinkable. My gosh. Well, here's another article that I've got a feeling will be really become reality. Sad to say, isn't it? Very sad to say. Food inflation went up more than expected in August. Pricing data released Friday by the Bureau of Economic Analysis indicates inflation rose more than expected in August, dealing Americans even higher costs for everyday essential purchases. The report's finding on personal consumption expenditure that excludes food and energy is a key marker of overall inflation. It rose by 0.6% over the previous month, bigger jump that had been predicted by Dow Jones. The PCE price index for August 2022 increased 6.2% above the August 2021 index. Over that 12-month period, food prices went up 12.4% and energy prices soared by 24.7%. Food prices have gone up faster than other consumer items, meaning groceries are taking up a larger share of the average American family's budget. The 12.4% increase in food prices is the largest over any 12-month period since February 1979. Food went up by 0.8% since July, down slightly from the 1.2% increase that occurred that month since June. Food prices are predicted to continue to spike at around 11% in 2022, which would be the highest number for an annual period since 1974. The food categories that have seen the largest price increases over the last year include dairy, eggs, cereals, baked goods, and vegetables. Eggs have historically seen annual price increase of around 3.2%. This year, the total inflation of egg prices is expected to be more than 25%. Cereal, cereals and baked goods are set to see 13.5% inflation this year, compared to the historical average of around 2%. Polling has shown that 63% of American families with children at home have had to change their eating habits due to rising prices, compared to only 31% who have been able to purchase food as usual. The August numbers benefited somewhat from lower gas prices. However, recent increases in fuel prices will likely have a negative impact on the September data. The average price of a gallon of regular gas nationwide on Friday morning was $3.80, according to AAA. That compares to the average a week prior of 3.69 cents. $3.69. The Dow Jones Industrial Average stood at around 28700 on Friday afternoon, down over 9.25% for the month of September. The S&P 500 lost around 9.6% in September, and the tech-heavy NASDAQ composite lost over 10.25% for the month. And Joe Biden says everything is fine. 
Everything is going to go down. Everything is going to be back to normal. Oh, yeah. Tell us again, President Biden. Tell us again. Well, I'm going to call it a night now for me. You know, and uh, sometimes uh, I wonder if maybe in a previous life I could have been a vampire. <laughs> Halloween's coming. <laughs> I don't know. But I've always been a night owl. Yeah. But I know when it's time to say goodnight. God bless everybody. Protect your people, your friends, your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, family members, whatever. Watch out for drugs. Know the signs. Dilated pupils. Argumentative. Unsettling. Anxious. Anxiety. Watch for the signs, people. If you see something that you think they might be on, call for help. I love you all. I thank you all for watching my videos. And always may God be with us. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. At this rate, we are so unsure. Where's the positivity anymore? I don't know. God love you. And so long. Till the next video. God love you.